What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I'm using a LiDAR scanning app on my phone in order to quickly do material estimates for things like flooring and base. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you've ever needed to like measure different areas of your house, either to figure out areas or to lay out floor plans, you can know that that can be a little bit of a time consuming task. Um, luckily, there's an app for your iPhone, which I've talked about on the channel before, called Polycam. And so what Polycam does is it allows you to use your phone and specifically the LiDAR sensor on iOS devices um, that have the LiDAR sensor in order to quickly measure a 3D area. And in this case, I'm using that in order to really quickly create floor plans of areas where I'm doing work and actually doing some measurement. So this can be a fast, easy way to get measurements of existing spaces directly into SketchUp. Um, one thing to note about this is the version that we're going to be using is the Polycam Pro version. You can download the free version and do LiDAR captures of spaces, measure them, other things like that. But in order to do the export, um, the file format export that we're going to bring into SketchUp, you would need the Pro version. Or you could just export an image from the free version and then manually model in SketchUp from that free image. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off on our iPhone and we're gonna add a new capture by clicking on the plus button in the upper right hand corner. But usually what I do is I like to tap the button for room mode um, down at the bottom and um, then you can click on the record button. And I apologize for the mess though. Part of the power of this app is that it can actually figure out where your walls are even when there's furniture and other stuff on the floor, right? So I've got all sorts of stuff in here. I've got like an air conditioning unit. I've got a 3D printer. I've got all sorts of stuff, but you can see how it's still recognizing and importing the walls and the door openings um, just by me pointing my phone at this space. You can see how it's automatically recognizing um, those things like the walls, um, the doors, other things like that. But then I can also move into other spaces, right? So if I walk out into the hallway here, notice Notice how I can use this in order to also add a scan of the hallway. And it's automatically picking up where the doors are. Um, it's picking up the top of wall. It says here that we need more light. So if we flip the switch on, then it's gonna go ahead and capture that. But you can walk around and you can capture other areas like this. And so again, notice how it's kind of recognizing where the top of wall is, door openings, and it's automatically incorporating them into your model like this. But then once you've walked around the space and kind of scanned it, next step is you can go back into your 3D model right here and you can actually export that to a 3D model that SketchUp can read. And so there, there are options in here to export either a 3D model or also a floor plan view. So I've tried the floor plan view and it has like a DXF export that you can bring into SketchUp, but, but I didn't necessarily get the full result that I wanted when I was doing that. So I'm gonna stick with exporting that 3D model. And so one thing that I usually do, because I don't like the furniture models that are in here, um, they just kind of throw everything off in SketchUp because they don't come in in their own tag. So usually what I'll do is I'll click on this process button and there's an option under process to toggle that furniture off. But then I'm just gonna click on the button for download and I'm gonna export this to a DAE. And I usually just email these files to myself um, because they're fairly small files, but you can export that DAE file to yourself and then import that into SketchUp. Okay, and so then from there, you kind of follow a typical SketchUp process, right? So you would just do a file import and you would just find that poly file that you exported. In this case, it's this DAE, and then you can click and move this in order to bring it into your SketchUp model. And I usually like to align this with the model axes in some way, just some kind of on this flat plane. And then we'll go ahead, we'll move our default model out of the way. But notice what that did is this gives us the room that we scanned in here. And it also gives us the ability to kind of model on top of it, right? And so a lot of the time what I'll do in a situation like this is I'll take a section cut across this building. So we'll just add a section cut right here, do a top down, click on okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna toggle off section planes. And we're gonna go into a top down view. And usually I like to go in that parallel projection. And so what that does is that gives me the ability now to come in here and draw on top of the space, right? So I can just tap the R key 
and use a rectangle. And usually when you use the rectangle, by the way, you wanna tap that up arrow key in order to lock this to the blue axis. So you just wanna click and tap that up arrow key in order to lock that to the blue axis. And what you can do is you can block out these spaces like this. Um, and so usually what I'll do is I'll just find the edges like this one. And again, make sure you're tapping that up arrow key to lock this to your axes so that it's actually flat. But then what you can do once you've kind of drawn this in is you can just take this model and you can just hide it like this. And so what this has done is this has given us um, just a general shape of this area. And this is all that I need in order to do an estimate, right? Because what I can do is I can click on this area right here, do a shift click and do a shift click, and I can get the area of those three spaces. So if I'm doing flooring in here, for example, I know this is gonna be 149 feet just like this. So you can use this in order to calculate things like flooring, but you could also use this to calculate things like base. And so you have to be a little bit smarter with the base, right? So you could just come in here and select all of these edges. Um, that's not necessarily what you want because we haven't really calculated for the door openings, right? But if I was to select all of these and this is the bottom of a stair, so I don't necessarily want that. Now I can see that I have 73 feet of base right here. Um, or you could also do an edit on hide all. And within that, remember that this shows you doors, right? So since it shows you doors, what you could do is you could come in here, you could draw a line in order to split these out, right? Because I'm just kind of measuring the perimeter here. So what I'm doing is I'm splitting this up into edges. Like this, but now, if I come in here, I'm gonna to go to top down again. One thing that's helpful when you're doing this is if you jump into your profiles, you can tag the endpoints like this just by toggling your endpoints on. So if you go into edit, you go into edge settings and you toggle endpoints on and you can bring that size down if you want to, but you can kind of see where those edges are, right? And I know where the doors are in my house. So I can just come in here and select the areas that aren't doors, right? You know, and if you wanted to, you could also group these. So you could just uh, do a right click and you could do a make group. And then if I go into my outliner, I could just rename this and I could call it base segments. Well, if you put them in a group, then you can just double click in here and do a control A in order to pick up all those edges. And so I can see that I really have closer to like 64 feet of base that needs to go in here. So you can use this to calculate areas and base really quickly. And so then depending on how you're trying to document things in here, you could make a note, right? So you could just leave a note right here. Whoops. Do a control A. And I would put the note outside of that group because it's going to mess up the way those segments are in here. But I would say base 64 lineal feet, right? And then I might make another note floor 150 square feet. So really anytime I need to measure anything in my house anymore, I find myself pulling out polycam instead of pulling out a tape measure. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Would you use something like this? Are you using something like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.